There is another class of morphisms that one can associate to C star algebras. And in order to define that class, we'll first have to define the notion of positivity inside of a C star algebra. So we say that an element, A, inside of a C star algebra is positive if and only if A equals B star B for some other element B in A. Now this may seem like a strange definition of positivity, but if we look at a few examples, um, we'll see that this reproduces a notion which would make sense as a definition of positivity based on our understanding of positive numbers. So one example is, let's take functions from x to c. Now, an element here, let's call it uh, f because we think of these as functions on x, is positive if and only if. Now remember how we were able to express f as a sum of numbers. So if and only if f of x is positive for all x. Now it's very interesting to see why this all works out and it's going to allow us to think about um, how we can actually multiply two different functions and see what happens in terms of their representation. So let's say I take two functions. Um, let me not use f because I've already used it here. Let's say g and h. So let's say g and h are two functions which we know we can write as g of x, ex, and h as a sum over all elements in x, h of x, ex. Now what happens when we multiply these two functions? g times h. Now this is going to be the product of both of these sums. And I'm going to use a different notation um, for this summation. I'm going to call this x prime so that we don't conflate it with this one. So this is going to be a double sum over x and x prime, both elements in x, g of x times h of x prime, ex times ex prime. Now what is the product of these two functions? So ex is the function that gives us 1 at x and 0 everywhere else, while ex prime is the function that gives us 1 at x prime and 0 everywhere else. Now when we multiply those two functions, the only time that it's ever non-zero is if x and x prime are both equal to each other and the input is exactly that, that um, element x. So this gives us the Kronecker delta xx prime multiplied by either of these. It doesn't matter whether we use ex or ex prime because if x equals x prime we both get the same result. Now because we have a double sum with a Kronecker delta here this becomes a single sum over elements in x, and we end up just multiplying the values of these two functions. And so we see why this statement is true now, because if a function is to be positive, then each of its elements are going to have to be positive because the product of two functions, namely if we took um, g star and g itself, we would get g star times g of x. So let's write that out just specifically. g star times g is going to be equal to a sum over all elements in x. And here, because it's g star times g, this is the usual norm of complex numbers squared. And because it's the, the square of a complex number, this is always going to be greater than or equal to zero. So if this is going to equal our, initial, our original function f, it better be that all of the entries of f of x are exactly greater than or equal to zero. So that's why positivity and this perhaps strange definition coincide at least for functions um, into c. So now let's take our example from before of n by n matrices. And if we take a specific n by n matrix,
then this is positive. If and only if, let's see, how many ways are there to say this? Um, one way is to say that A is self-adjoint and the eigenvalues are all greater than or equal to zero. So sometimes this is called um, positive semi-definite, for instance. Um, another way, another if and only if, this is also equivalent to saying that um, if we take any vector v and we apply our matrix A to it, and then we take the inner product with v itself, this will be positive for all vectors v in Cn. So that's another way of thinking about positivity in this example. And there's a really easy way to see why this notion of positivity coincides with this one. For instance, if A is a self-adjoint matrix and all of its eigenvalues are non-negative, then what we can do is we can take the square root of that matrix. And the way we do that is we can first diagonalize our matrix A. Because it's self-adjoint, we know that there exists a unitary matrix U such that A equals U D U dagger. And then we can take the square root of that diagonal matrix that we have in the middle, split it up into its two parts, and therefore we can take this matrix B to be exactly, um, in this case, the B would be on the right-hand side, so it would be um, the square root, I think it would be the adjoint of the square root times the adjoint of the vector of eigenvalue of eigenvectors of this associated matrix. So that's one way to show that we get um, exactly this form back. And to see that this is positive given this structure is much even much simpler because if A equals B star B, then we could move the B star um, over to the other side and we get, because this is an inner product, we have a vector with itself, namely B applied to the vector V, take the inner take the norm of that vector, which is always going to be a non-negative number. So it's not so difficult to see how these two notions coincide. Now, given this notion of positivity, we can ask for a map to not preserve all of the algebraic structure, but just to preserve this notion of positivity. So a linear map from two C star algebras, A to B, and this time, I will use slightly different notation to distinguish it from the star homomorphisms we defined earlier. So a linear map, let's call this um, capital F, is positive whenever F of a positive, let's use now A star A, a positive element is equal to another positive element for some b and b. And it's positive unital if and only if it's both positive and unital, which means that it sends the identity element to the identity element. So let's look at some examples. Let's write that this is our definition. Let's look at some examples of positive unital maps between C star algebras, some of the C star algebras that we've been looking at. First, let's look at if we have an algebra A and we take a positive unital map from A to the complex numbers. Every such positive unital map is called a state on A. And we'll see why it's called a state um, perhaps uh, in a moment. So now let's look at a very special example of such a thing. Let's look at what happens if we take our functions on X and we take a state on that C star algebra. So because this is a 
finite dimensional vector space. We even have a basis. Our basis is the, the set of functions e x. This functional is completely determined by its values on these specific functions. So it's determined by, right? Every linear map is determined by what it does to a basis. So it's determined by omega of e x for all x and x. Now, because e x is an example of a positive element, we know that this number is going to be greater than or equal to 0. And we also know that the sum of these e x's over all x and x is equal to the identity function on the set of functions from x to c. Why is that? Well, if we take any function and we multiply by it by the function that takes the value 1 everywhere, then it doesn't change the function that we have. So when we apply this result and use the fact that every such state is unital, this implies that the sum of all of these over all x in x is equal to 1. In other words, this gives us a set of numbers indexed by the elements in x that are non-negative and sum up to 1. This is exactly a probability measure on the finite set x. As another example, let's look at if we take n by n matrices to c then it turns out that there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between states on n by n matrices and matrices row, n by n matrices row, such that row is positive and the trace of rho equals 1. And this one-to-one -one correspondence takes such a density matrix, let's put this as the set of all of these guys, the set of all of these states. This one-to-one -one correspondence takes a specific density matrix rho and produces for us a state that is given by the trace of rho, and then we apply any matrix here. So what this means is this is a function on n by n matrices, we plug in an n by n matrix A, we multiply by the matrix rho, take the trace, that gives us a complex number, and that turns out to be a state. And we'll analyze um, why this one-to-one -one correspondence holds in more detail in um, shortly.